Greetings, people of God. Welcome to another glorious Sons of God broadcast. Uh, we're, we're living in a very exciting time right now. And you know, like, um, there's something true that I learned from listening to certain great men of God. There's this uh, man of God who passed away now, died now, he's dead now, um, called Washington Knee. And he was uh, just as um, a blessing to me in my spiritual life as Paul was. Uh, first of all, let me say my name is Minister Ron Wilkerson. My phone number is 781-531-5430. And um, I just want to give that so people can be able to contact me if they come across these videos. Because what what's going to have to happen is um, the last chapter, the last verse of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. It says, in the last time, in other words, in the time of the coming of the Lord, the manifestation of the sons of God, in other words. He said, I'm going to send forth the spirit of Elijah. He shall turn the heart of the children, fathers to the children and the heart, the heart of the children to their fathers. And the reason why it's like that father-son in relationship or father-to-children in relationship because that's the way that Father Yah does everything. It's according to a father-son covenant. And uh, that's just the way they said. So he said, uh, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they humble themselves as a little child. And the reason why it's that way is uh, because every child in the, in the kingdom of God has a spiritual father. And you're going to have to have a relationship with him. And, you know, a lot of people, did, like in that, the whole concept of Christianity got the, uh, right now, just for a season, because it's Father Yah's. Uh, the creator of the universe's uh, plan to uh, have the um, all those that are the Luciferian worship people that worship uh, Satan, the devil, better than also known as Lucifer. And uh, you know that's a big situation uh, that you know needs to be broken down because Lucifer uh, once was not uh, an evil uh, entity. And Lucifer is not a name, it's a meaning, but it don't mean son of the morning. Uh, for a while I was teaching and telling people that what Lucifer wasn't a name, but it was a meaning and meant son of the morning. But further study, let me know, I have to go back and to say Lucifer don't mean son of the morning, it means... Um, uh, son of the howling, howling moon, as if, as in to bark at the moon, the, the one that howls at the moon. So we see this howling at the moon as if, you know, it goes with a lot of stuff that I could talk about, but I'm, you know, with the, the situation with the blacks and the whites, but I really don't want to get all into that because they say, oh, you're just prejudiced. No, I'm not prejudiced. It's just some truths that there's been a great, huge global conspiracy concerning black and whites. Um, really, the, the Bible is a history book for black people. And the original Jews are not those people that are over in Israel right now. That that, that nation of people wasn't formed until 1948. Um those are not the true Jews, those white people do with them long, long beards, and they be doing their head like this up against the wall. Those are not the original Jews. All the original Jews are the tr original chosen people of God, and they're all black. So are you just prejudiced? Nope, no, that's not it. What prejudice was what the white people used to do to us, hanging us from trees. Now, that was prejudice. I'm just speaking truth. And you know, you know, you could take it as you want it. If you could study yourself on your phone, Google on your phone, and find out everything I'm telling you is true uh, concerning the black and white man. Okay, now um, the, as far as the white man, they are truly the descendants of the fallen angels. And these fallen angels, the whole group collectively of them is called Lucifer. The whole entire group of them is called Lucifer. So, you know, they teach you in that place they call the church that Lucifer was God's most powerful angel and he deceived one third of God's angels and they thought to take over heaven and cast God out of heaven and they lost the battle because there was only one third of them and two thirds of God's angels. That's a lie. It's not true. 
There's so many lies that I was taught even myself when I was coming up in that place they called the church because my father was a, a Baptist uh, preacher and pastor in that place they called the church. And all these lies, they were so stuck in my mind and spirit that it really took the truth of the spirit of the Father Yah to get out all those lies. That's why he said, once again, I shall shake not only the heaven, but the earth. I'll shake the heaven and the earth. And he said, why need to shake the heavens? Because the heavens, it's not talking about what you think the heavens is. The heavens are the, is, means the abode of God. And the abode of God are the people of God. The, the, the Hebrew, Israelites, Jews, whatever you want to call them. They're all black. But nevertheless, like, you know, they have these people that call themselves the Hebrew Israelites. And they be saying that the white man can't be saved. Because there is scriptures in the Bible that speak of that salvation is only to the Jews, which are all black. But then again, because of the Jews, they rejected Father Yah, the creator of heaven and earth. So God put a curse on the black man and said, I'm going to let you be ruled and dominated by your enemy, and which was the white man. And you can see that in the world today, where the, the, the black man catch hell from the white man. But it, was, it wasn't just because the white man wanted to be mean to black people. It was just a curse that God put on the black man because they had a covenant with God, but they broke it and they didn't keep it. So God said, okay, because of that, you're going to surely die. He said, I'm going to put you over into the hands of your enemy, the white man, until you be consumed. In other words, dead. But, but he said, yet and still, I'm going to have a remnant of my people that I'm going to save. And they're going to be saved and then they're going to rule over these white, the whites and give them a taste of their own medicine back. So that's another long, long, long story. But I want to get back into it. Let me give you some um, foundational proof of what I'm saying. You need to get yourself a 1611 King James Bible. And what, what is that? It's the original Bible. And even in the original Bible, they took some, some books out of the uh, pocket book. So the original 1611 King James Bible is the complete Bible that was first in 1611. But even before 1611, there was the in the um, in the um, Word of God Bible, whatever you want to call it, uh, books that they took out. Even so, the Roman Catholic Church took out. And but you won't know these things unless you study. Like I be telling some of my so-called minister friends that um, you know you need to get uh, read some things that are in the Book of Maccabees and Second Ezra and so forth. He said, Nah, man, I'm just gonna stick with my Bible. But they don't realize the Bible that they got is not complete. And the original 1611 King James Bible, you got the Old Testament, and then you got the uh, Apocrypha in the middle, and then you got the New Testament. And then within the Apocrypha, it's 14 books that they took out, all of it. So you never, But you can go to uh, Barnes & Noble or any Christian bookstore, Christian Science Reading Room, and ask them, can you have a, a Apocrypha? Or either you can just get the 1611 uh, Bible, which has the Apocrypha already in it. But if you don't want to do that, either way, you're going to have to spend at least 20 bucks. So um, what you want to get, though, like I said, is the Apocrypha. He said, I don't believe those books are the uh, in the original Bible. But you don't even know what you think the King James Bible you got now is the original Bible. That's an incomplete Bible. And people know they hear these truths. They reject that knowledge. And then, you know, you can know these things. You can Google it on your phone. He said, I don't believe the Google on my phone. Well, I come to find out through all the studying I did that everything you find on Google is 100% true. So, you know, there's some people that are what you call willfully ignorant. And they just want to be ignorant. Cold water. They want to be ignorant willfully. So there ain't nothing you can do for them because they like, I ain't trying to hear that. So if they say, I ain't trying to hear that, they ain't going to hear that. They ain't going to hear nothing. But these people are going to be in the most trouble because there's a lot of things that God is revealing to his people that they ain't going to know that what Father Yah was trying to show them all the time. He's been trying to show them, but they won't listen. So I don't know, I'm going all over the place, but one of the main things, like I said, I want to show is that uh, what the Lord has been having me on. And what, what I believe that through revelation, he caused me to see 
what grace um, does as far as our pursuit and um, causing the um, exit of the the Christ in us. I'd rather say Yahshua because Christ is mysteriously connected to that name Jesus, that white Jesus. And that this is what Satan is going to use. Um, one of the Ten Commandments is not to make any graven image of anything that is in heaven. And you know, in a lot of even black churches, you got a big old picture of a white Jesus. In our living room, we got Martin Luther King, a white Jesus, and maybe probably Tupac on the other side. <laughs> and that's, those are your sacred pictures in your living room. Martin Luther King, Tupac Shakur, and a white Jesus in the middle. And this is all satanic stuff, man. We shouldn't have none of these things worshipped as idols and at all. He said, don't make no image unto anything that is in heaven. So if you got a picture of a Jesus, you're breaking one of the uh, Ten Commandments right there. But you can tell uh, so-called Christians, this, and they don't care. They still keep it. Say, no, ain't, ain't, you ain't taking away my Jesus. Well, you hold on to that devil. It's a devil. If you Google on your phone, how do you say a, a earth pig or pig of the dirt in Latin, you'll see the name Jesus popped up. So you know the Father Yah ain't calling the Son Yahshua a, de a pig. So you know you, a lot of people, they're ignorant because they can't receive the truth because they're not of the truth. They're not of the truth at all. So they can't receive the truth. So all they can believe and receive is a lie because that's what they are. Remember, Father Yah, Yahshua said that you are of your father the devil and he was a liar from the beginning. And he, from the beginning, he's the father of it. So you got a whole generation of people that's called the lie. And their father, Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, he's the father of all that. So anything you tell them that's true, they'll fight you to and nail saying, no, that's wrong. That ain't true. Because they can't receive the truth. Only thing they can cling to is a lie. That's the only thing that will register in their mind is something that's not true. You can spend all your everything, proof and have proof and everything in scripture, in the Dictionary, Bibles, library, everything, proof that what you're saying is true. They'll fight you too, and they'll, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. But they won't do nothing to study to see whether it's true or not. I don't know, just whenever, whenever I'm speaking the word, I'll be here, there, and everywhere. But I'm like, I'm the Lord, been not right here lately, been having me on the theme of fasting. And so when I first started out on this route, I had said to myself, because I know Daniel did 21 days and nights fighting against the powers of the darkness. And then the Lord Yahshua, he did uh, 40 days and nights. And Moses did 40 days and nights too in, in the mountain. And then it's a scripture over there in Zechariah, I think it's 4 and 7. He said, who art thou, O mountain, to stand before Zerubbabel? And Zerubbabel is another word for the sons of God, the kings of the earth. And another word for them is Melchizedek. They, they go under many titles, the sons of God. They're the kings of the earth. The, the, the sons of God are the kings of the earth. And Romans 8, 19 said, the whole creation is groaning and travailing, waiting for the unveiling, uncovering, manifestation. What's the other word? Manifestation. What's the other word? Manifestation. It's another word. Revelation, yeah. Revelation of the sons of God. That word manifestation, the same word as revelation. It means to take off the cover. And so now let me show you the scriptures that go with that. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So in order for you to get to this power, it's going to be only God and not you. So he made sure that where he hid the power and the glory of all that is contained in our spirits. In other words, behind the veil. In the most holy place of your spirit, if you're chosen by God. And your spirit is everything that God is, is in your spirit, because God is spirit. But this does not apply as truth to everybody. But everybody can take part of it if they can hear their spiritual father telling them about it. You know, I brought this word to my offspring and siblings. They shut me down cold. They dropped me like it was hot. They wouldn't have none of it. But yet still, I try to tolerate. I tried to tolerate them. They seem to be losing themselves out with me. Every time I try to keep them incorporated in my life, so I can keep them covered, they do something for me to put them back on the outside again. It never fails. So that lets you know that they're not in the blueprint. 
If it's not in the blueprint, I can't build it in the house. Good God am I. I'm getting goose bumps and turkey bumps and chicken bumps. I'm getting all the bumps. But um, yeah, man, you know, so you know, you know how you can we can try it and we may. But we'll find out if we're able to bring salvation to these people. Because if it's in the blueprint, then you can build it in the house. So I'm finding out what's not in the blueprint. In other words, what I mean by they're not in the blueprint. Their name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And who's the Lambs? It ain't talking about Yahshua, better known as JC. It's talking about the sons of God. But the, the Word of God said that JC or Yahshua was the uh, Lamb of God. Yeah, but we are too. Ephesians 1 and 4 said we were chosen in, to, in him too. So when he was crucified as the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world, we were too. The sons of God were too. Take away the sins of the world. Matter of fact, the sons of God are Yahshua's father. He said, what? Preacher, what are you talking about? Yeah, the sons of God. Remember he said, greater work shall ye do? And he said, I go unto my father. And in John 20, 17, he told Mary, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended unto my father. That word ascended means to go into. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, he said, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Descend means to come out of. So what did they come out of heaven? They ain't talking about coming out of the clouds. Proof, 2 Corinthians seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Now, if, if, if the clouds is talking about that heaven, what, what clouds you know need a healing? Don't worry, I'll wait. Crickets. It's talking about us. Clouds can't pray nor need a healing. So we are the heavens that the Bible's talking about. Good God, I might have just got goosebumps again. Chicken bumps too. This truth, man, it's tight, but it's right. Good God, I might have, man, I'm so excited. I'm point of sisters ain't got nothing on me, Jack. I'm so excited, I just can't hide it. BGs ain't got nothing on me either. I feel like dancing, dancing. Good God, I might have. Man, I'm so excited, man, I might not never want to eat again. Yeah, they dig on my sister. One of my siblings calling me now. Uh, I. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey. I'm good. I'm making a video talking about y'all right now. No, it's okay. It's okay. I can put you you on the video. That's all. I was talking about um I, I, I got coffee and carry in the juice here. I just thought I'd call and say hi. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. I'm just um the kingdom of God getting ready to be manifested. I'm so excited. Uh, okay. I'll I'll talk to you a little later. All right. Yeah, that was uh, one of my siblings, um uh the over there with my other sibling, the one that called herself said that she was a uh, son of God. And she was a king in the kingdom of God and telling me that I'm living in sin because they don't believe that God married me and my wife. And they robbed me of my $5,000. Like I was trying to forgive all that because the word of God said you got to forgive. So I forgave that they robbed me of my, my, my um, you know, my money. And, um, and, you know, I forgave that. But then again, they offended me again. So, you know, I'm still trying to keep a door open for them. They keep offending me. And I used to have fish fries, have them come over my house for fish and everything. But now I stopped that because I couldn't have it. And, you know, it's so sad, you know, and the reason why they're not, you know, you know, in union and uh, compatible with me is because they have the whole church. The whole and the bride just don't get along. They, you can do all you want to do because they're... Your relatives in the flesh, but the word of God said we're not to know any man anymore after the flesh. Even Yahshua, better known as JC, we're not even to know him anymore after the flesh. Now, you know, if we can't know Yahshua, the son of Father Yah, if we can't know him by the flesh, what more so your family? He said, dang, y'all kid, just your mother and father's child and you their child, y'all sisters and brothers. I don't, I don't care about that. If they, if they don't fit in the kingdom of God, they shouldn't be fitting in your life either. And you know, it's a tough pill to swallow because you love your family and because you grew up with them and everything. You know, it says, you know, that's my family. You know, blood, blood is thicker than water. Yeah, but blood, this, this fleshly blood is not thicker than spirit. Mm -hmm. It ain't thicker than that. 
Because spirit, the spirit is the life of God. And if that, that life of the flesh don't come in alignment with the what the life of God is saying, that life of the flesh, you can forget about all that. You can forget about it, especially if they ain't hearing the word that you have. You can't you can't bid them God speed. Second John verse 9 said if they don't care. Bring the same word that you have, that Yahshua is come in the flesh, is come in the flesh, not will come in the flesh, but is come in the flesh. If you don't agree with that word, he said, don't bid whoever don't receive that word, don't bid them God's feet. So, you know, what's that? What is that? So, you know, it's, it's a glorious word, but I was... Um, Wanting to point out this fact concerning grace. Um, and I seen it. Okay, it's a great revelation that I seen. Because right now, you know, Father, y'all always re reward sacrifice. Let me get this little piece right here in here that I wanted to get in. I wanted to get in. I wanted to get in on where um, Washington need this uh, man of God. Like I said, he passed away. And he, was in a, he has been a great as a blessing to me as Paul has. And um, he has said that if there's no altar, a sacrifice on the altar, there can be no heavenly fire. Talking about Moses, I mean, um, I'm sorry, not Moses, Elijah, when he was going against the prophets of Baal, he put a sacrifice on the altar. He soaked it with water. And um, the prophets of Baal put their sacrifice on the altar and asked for their God to consume it, and nothing happened. So Moses, so Elijah said, what, what is your God, sleeping or something? Call him out, or maybe he's taking a nap. And there was, Elijah was just mocking those 850 prophets of Baal. And then he said, okay, it's now it's my turn. He soaked the altar with water, soaked it up real wet, and put the altar um, sacrifice on the altar, the, the book or whatever it was, the uh, lamb or whatever it was, Soaked it up real, real good. And then he called the God of heaven. And he consumed the uh, sacrifice. Sucked up all the water too. Bone dry. And consumed the altar. So there was a great revelation in that. Um, going back to memory. Abraham had to bring a sacrifice to the altar. His firstborn. And this is a great revelation. Which is, goes with the Melchizedek priesthood. You got all these nuggets that are hidden in the world of, word of God. To um, bring forth the power and the strength of the, of the grace of of Father Yah, so so that we can do. And manifest what the truth says. Remember when uh, we were speaking of Yahshua, better known as JC. It said that he came full of grace and truth, and that's us too. Everything that 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 the Word of God is saying that was true about Yahshua. Better known as Jesus Christ, which is not his name. That's a satanic name. I won't go into that. <coughs> but everything is saying about him, that is true. Where you put that comment? Everything they saying about him that was true, is true about us too. Because these preachers 1 and 4 said that we were chosen in him from the foundation of the world. So if we were chosen him at the foundation of the world, where are we at now? We're still in him, chosen him from the foundation of the world. I just want to put this revelation down also that um, how you remember, notice how Moses and Yahshua was fasting 40 days and nights in the mountain. And um, they had to endure what they encountered in the mountain. So over there in um, Zechariah, I believe, like I said, 4 and 7, it said that, uh, let me double check that right quick. I don't like to give you the, uh, the wrong scriptures. Over there, in, um, like I said, uh, Zechariah 4 and 7, it says, Who art thou, O great mountain, that standest before Jerusalem? Don't you know that you shall become a plain? Let me see, is that it? Yep, Zechariah 4 and 7. It said, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. In other words, it said, This mountain shall become a flat land. In other words, you're going to overcome the mountain. And what was going on in the mountain? I just showed you that revelation. See, these are Melchizedek priesthood golden nuggets 
that give you power to obey what the truth, the word of truth says, because your flesh is going to fight against it. Paul said the spirit wars against the flesh, and the flesh against the spirit. So like in a matter of fasting, your flesh is going to be kicking up, doing everything in this power for you not to fast. So you're going to get all these Melchizedek priesthood golden nuggets and bring to pass what it says over there in the book of Matthews. He said, I will utter, I think it's Matthews 13, 35. He said, I will utter speeches and phrases and word, a word that has been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So we're going to find all these secret things that Yahshua said because we're going to need the power of the revelated words to give us the uh, the integrity and the character to um, do what the Spirit says other than what the flesh says. And you're going to need that strength. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he said, My strength is made perfect in weakness. And he said, My grace is sufficient. So we're going to need this grace in order for the get the, the Yahshua or the Christ that is in us to come out. That's what it means in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. So this is what it says over here. And um, this is another golden nugget that I've seen. And you know, once you get the hunger in the spirit for the glorified body, then the hunger that you have in your stomach for some chicken or a hamburger, you'll overcome that voice with this, your hunger and thirst after righteousness instead of KFC. And you're going to need the grace that comes only... Paul said about grace, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. But he said, wait a minute, nevertheless I live. Yet, then he said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the Christ and the life I now live in is only because of the uh, faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's almost like a head rattler. In other words, you're going to have to shake your head to get it. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ lived in me. So let me get back over here. I'm all over the place, man. I tell you, when you, I tell you, you see God with fasting and praying, he'll put stuff in your brain you wouldn't have never thought of. It's, okay, Zechariah 4 and 7. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Jerusalem? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace unto it. Now you hear that? He shall bring forth the headstone by crying grace unto it. So he said the way that your mountain, and what is what is my mountain in particular right now? My mountain right now is fasting. The, what I need to fast in order to bring forth the, the glory that's behind the veil. And Hebrews 10 and 20 said the way that you get to this glory behind the veil, it says, Hebrews 10 and 20 says, by a new and living way which he consecrated us for us through the veil or within the veil. So in other words, he said to get through all the glory that's in the Ark of the Covenant, that's in our spirit, that's behind these two veils. The only way you can get to it is by fasting. So it was something else I wanted to point out too. Oh yeah, I was listening to these. Because there's a lot of stuff that you can hear on your phones. How that um, they're getting ready to bring forth this false white Jesus and why you say white Jesus? Because every time you think of that name Jesus, you see a white picture. So it's a lot I wanted to say. I hope I got it all in there. But that one of that main things was, I want to get in there also in Isaiah 58 or 53. I think it's 58. Let me check that too while I, get a, I got a chance to check it. I think it's Isaiah 58. It says, um, Isaiah chapter 58, King James. It says that uh, uh, Isaiah 58, King James. It says, uh, Isaiah chapter 58, King James, Bible Gateway. And I'm uh, like in your pursuit of trying to pass. Uh, I don't know why our phone's acting up. Every time I'm doing something, Isaiah chapter 58, King James, Bible Gateway. Every time I'm trying to do something. What is it, 58 and uh, 5? Uh, 
Yeah, Isaiah 58. It said, This is the fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head as a bulrush, to, to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? And then he said, You're fasting. He said, Because you're fasting, the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Now, where's that? At? Oh, yeah, here it is. He said, When you fast, your light shall break forth as the morning, and your help shall bring, bring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before me, and the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. So, just that right there, just say, seeing that the glory of the Lord is going to be your reward. You remember Colossians 1 27, that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So how are we going to get it out and get the glory? Fasting. Once again, my name is Minister Ron Wilkerson. Phone number 7815315430. You know, I'm so excited, man. And I feel an inner strength. And it's not, don't got nothing to do with the flesh, mind you. Because your flesh is going to be doing every, everything in the world to deceive you with the power of Satan, the devil, or whatever, speaking to your carnal mind, because that's what he deals with, works through, carnal mind. And that word carnal, carnal comes from the word carnivore. Like lions are carnivores, meat eaters. But because of the revelation and the, um, and the grace, see, revelation gives you power in the grace. In order to do what what's true, and not to obey things of the flesh, so no children that priesthood out.